Hello everybody, Steven here with Cardboard Coalition. And today I figured I would bring you guys a how to play of Gatefall. This game is the original printing, which is still the same company as Jack Dyer Productions, I believe, but they've since changed to Grim Rabbit Games. So we'll just say Grim Rabbit, you might hear me bounce back and forth. But this is a game um, from Grim Rabbit Games. It can play up to four players. Um, the base game, this is the base game setup. And the, the stuff that comes in the base game. And it's a, for this, it's a two-player game. And we're playing team mode. There's an arena mode too, but I'm going to uh, run through how to play team mode. So it might not necessarily be in this order, but let's go ahead and run through the setup really quick so we know how to set up the game. So first thing we do is we uh, go ahead and set down the board Get the board out. This is the gate in the middle. Make sure you get all that set up. Um, and then each player rolls five die. All right, they take five die and they see who gets the most skulls. Let's see if we can grab another five. All right, so here's another five. And so this player over here, which is the uh, post-apocalyptic group, they would be the first player. So now we know who first player is. And you do the same thing if you're playing with three player and eventually there'll be enough factions for four player But it's whoever has the highest and obviously if there's a tie you go ahead and roll from there the Next thing you want to do is you want to create a um, Zeros deck you want to create the draw deck. So this is the zeros deck. It's all the leftover zeros, right? You want to create a draw deck Which is right here and in the draw deck we have three kinds of cards we have heals, we have threes, and twos. There are no ones or zeros that go in this deck. This is um, for when we're trying to buy more cards to get our deck built up. Also give each player a reference card, right? So they can go over their turn sequence and they can understand it and we'll follow this to go through all the turn sequences. And then I don't know why there's not two of them and maybe mine didn't come with two, but this tells you it's a reference card um, nothing on the back, but it tells you what you can do and we'll go over that when it's time. This is for the upgrades. This is to buy card. Well, upgrades, buy cards and discard cards. So you just go ahead and give that to someone. I found you end up passing it back and forth. I've played this um, with three people and you just kind of pass it around. All right. Then allow people to pick their factions. And once they pick their faction, you give them all the characters for their faction. Each faction has three characters. Some factions have allies. And the A right here designates that ally. So Penny is an ally of Firebug. And there's other um, players that you can get. There's some expansion, not expansion, kind of expansion, but there's other players you can get that have allies that you can play. Um, but all right, so each player picks their player and then we're gonna use old Brog's board here really quick to demonstrate some stuff. They get their um, boards and I should mention right now, some of these are the upgraded components for the Kickstarter, these little plastic uh, potion bottles and the gas cans and the metal coins. Um, you get wood pegs for these, nice little wood pegs to mark your health on your board and cardboard coins that are made out of decent cardboard like these player boards. But anyways, back to it. So you go ahead and you take this and you put it in, if you guys can see, there's some four corners. It kind of makes a little box around a number. That is your starting health. This is the health you start the game with, and whenever your hero is um, brought back to life and brought into the game, this is where their health, heart, health starts. All right, so how you play this game, once everybody's got all that set up, you're pretty much ready to go, oh, I did forget one thing, the dice. Make sure you have dice, and it comes with lots of dice, as you guys can see over here. So lots of dice. You could put them, woo, knocking a uh, brog around. You can put them in the middle where everybody can reach and go ahead and put them. Uh, split them up however you want to do it doesn't really matter but there you go so now you're ready to play the game so how do you win this game to win this game you want to get seven victories so I grab four and you could always change the number a lot of times um, when I play we put it to four or five usually five so there's not an odd number you can do three for a quick game but in the book it says you play till seven victory points and how you get victory points is by taking out your opponent and on the opponent cards, I guess we'll just keep going with Brog over here. 
So with Brog, you see there's a star and a number and every person has one of those except for allies, right? Because you get no points for killing them. But you get that many victory points if you beat him, right? And you also take him off the board and he has to respawn and things like that. But we'll get to that. All right, so to win this game, you want seven victory points. How you do that is you use this deck of cards. Oh, each player gets um, 10 cards. I forgot to say that in the beginning, but we'll go through it right now. You get um, seven ones and two zeros. So I guess we'll just kind of divide that up so you guys can see. So this makes up your initial deck is you get seven action cards. You get three zeros. And of course, you shuffle these up. I'm just going to do a quick one, so it'll probably be a horrible shuffle. Um, you shuffle these up. So how you move, how you attack, how you knock another player out is by getting within range and then attacking them. And to do both those, you use, you have a hand of cards, and I'll go through this here in a second. You have your starting hand of five cards, and you go ahead and use whatever actions you have. I told you I was going to shuffle these horrible. So now I have two actions. I can use those actions to move, move, to attack, attack, right? But you get two actions. And so let's just go with this. First player goes, they go ahead and put their cards down, right? They give their, their um, actions. So this player over here, the fantasy player, has two actions. And they can choose to do um, a couple things. They can choose to uh, attack, or they can choose to move with those actions. So the other thing I guess I'll say right now, um, just so we can talk about movement, well, we'll hold that to the action phase. We'll hold that to the action phase, I'm sorry. All right, so that's how you get through the game. You put down your cards, you play your five cards, you do, you have X amount of actions to use, and it goes back and forth. One player goes, next player goes, so on and so forth. So, before we get into what you do um, during your turn, we will let's go over these player boards really quick. And I just want to tell you guys, it, to some people it might look like there's stuff going on, maybe a lighter gamer. You can play this. Um, this is very basic. So this is how it works. This is your faction symbol in the background. That's obviously your player art. That's your victory points for knocking that player out. There's their name. This is their special ability. This is their health bar down here. I know I'm jumping around a little bit. If they get down to the skull, that means they're knocked out and they have to respawn at a later turn. This is their starting health and they can never go above the highest health that's on their board. Right here are the upgrades that you can do. So throughout the game, you get upgrade tokens and you go ahead and put those in that spot. That means you get that upgrade. So you would have more health, right? He has more health, more defense and um, two more strength which is crazy but we'll talk about that here in a second all right and then right here is your stats so brog here starts with seven health but he can be upgraded to eight his strength is eight but it can be upgraded to ten his defense is three but it can be upgraded to um, four his speed is one his range is one and he gets to do one attack so you can only attack once with brog on your turn now how this works, a lot of it's really basic. That's your health, that's how many hits you can take. Your speed, that's how far you can move. Your range is how far you can attack. So a one range means Brog has to be, let's go ahead and just move him out. Brog has to be right next to somebody to attack him, right? And once he gets within range of someone, he rolls X amount of dice. So he would roll eight dice. He rolls a, a mother load of dice, right? So he would roll eight dice. So let me see if I can grab eight dice over here. Six, seven, eight. So he gets to roll eight dice when he attacks, right? When he defends, he gets to roll X amount of dice and that's under your defense. So for defense, he has three, he can go up to four, right? So same thing, let's say it is um, Firebug who ran up to Brog and she wants to smack Brog he gets to roll three dice unless he's upgraded to four. So he gets those three dice that he gets to roll. All right, and that is everything for the player board. Now, I need to jump back for a quick second and, and 
sorry guys, and set up the how you place your characters. So each player, this is during the setup, they set their character down. It has to be adjacent to your base. These zones back here are your base, and they'll we'll talk about your base in um, further on in the video. In a little bit, we'll talk about the, the base. So everyone's close. The one thing is if you have a character, and there's some characters with larger bases, you can place them like this, you could place them like this, and you could place them in any spot you want. They can't share with another, though it's kind of fun. These bases are a little big, but he's a one spot. So he could be right here, he could be right here, he could be anywhere in here. He cannot be set up like that. So he has one foot out, it gives him advantage. So if you're setting him that way, you set him here, and I'll explain the movement of the big guys and why they set like that, but you set him here. So everybody, they're all set up. All right, so how we're gonna go through your phase on each person's turn, they go through these seven phases. And I know once again, sounds like a lot, but we'll get through this really quick. All right, so, and this card will tell you, and you get used to this really quick in the beginning. So first phase, resolve any first phase events. What that means is some characters, and I'm glancing around, I know there's a character around here, I believe there is, I usually play um, fantasy or the newest expansion into the woods, so um, maybe, well, let's, if you have a first phase, and what it will tell you first phase, you go ahead and you resolve any action for first phase. So if you have an action on your specific board, the other thing is, if you have more players in the gate than the opponent, so let's say this is post the post-apocalyptic group, it's during their first phase, post-apocalyptic has firebug and they have exile, and for the fantasy group, they have Randar, and I might mix up and call him Gandalf a lot, but you know, they have Randar. The uh, post-apocalyptic has two. That means they get a coin, and you want coins because coins are what um, allow you to upgrade, discard cards, and things like that. All right, so you go ahead and you see if there's any first phase actions, right? A lot of times there's not, someone might be in the zone, but a lot of times there's not. Next, you spend coins, um, it's upgrades, so you spend coins to upgrade. And so it, these are your money coins, right? The, the gold colored ones, they have a one on it, the cardboard ones are, are yellow too. Um, the victory are more brown and the other ones are silver, so these metal coins match up anyways, but you have that number one. So you spend coins, to upgrade your character, right? So during that time, you would upgrade. And it tells you, oh, I grabbed the wrong card. It tells you how many coins you need to upgrade. Five coins, sounds like a lot of coins. First time I played, I thought the same thing, but not necessarily true. So you could upgrade your character. So we'll just point over here or over here so you guys can see. Let's. We're gonna borrow you again, Brog. Brog, we're borrowing you all the time. All right, so let's go ahead and jump Brogs up here. So, upgrade phase, we're doing the upgrade phase right now, your second phase. Brog can either upgrade his character for five coins. For four coins, he can draw a card from here and put it into his discard pile. I know it's kind of hard to see. You know, put it into his discard pile, that costs four coins. Or for three coins, he can go ahead and get rid of a zero. Um, a zero from his hand or the discard pile. So let's say he, two, three, four, let's see. We have the five, remember this bad hand that I drew? So I already know what my hand is. So in the upgrade phase, I can spend three coins, if I have them, to get rid of a zero, and you just go ahead and put it over here in the zero stack. Zeros just clog up your deck. So that's the upgrade phase. You either upgrade your, one of any, and it could be any player, right? It could be any of your players, you control them all. So. You would either upgrade someone, um, get rid or get a card from the deck that bumps you up, that gives you, oh, it shows it right here. You get either two actions per card, three actions per card, or a heal. And the heal heals your entire group. So all your guys, if you play that heal card, all your guys get a heal one, up to their max level of health, right? And then the other thing is you can upgrade. So that's the or you can upgrade your actual character. So upgrade your character, um, get a card, put it in the discard, buy yourself, it's basically buying a card, put it in your discard, or 
getting rid of a zero out of your hand. All right, so then you move on to your next phase. Your next phase is your respawn phase, and it lets you know a little bit here. So I'll just explain it really quick. When a hero gets beat up, when they get their health all the way down to the skull, they don't, they're not done for the game. You take them off the board. I tend to put them on my little player board so I remember that I took them off. Some people will put them behind the base. But let's say we have him there. We can do the behind the base. So respawn. If you have any players that have been knocked out, you put them into your base. And they're in the base that round, right? Now, if it, you get to the respawn phase and you already had someone in your base, that player you can place anywhere you want on the board. So basically when your player gets knocked out, you lose a turn. Player gets knocked out, everyone goes round. My next phase, I get to put him on the board. I get to put him in the base, but he doesn't technically come out on the board. And the next round, he can come out on the board. So that is your respawn. If a player's knocked, put him in the base. If the player's already in the base, you can go ahead and put him out on the board. I don't know why you put him sideways, because they have big bases, that's why. All right. Then you go ahead and reveal your hand. So you, when it's time for you to play, you don't get to say, oh, this is what I have. What you do is you take your five hands and you reveal it so everybody at the table can see what you have, right? So you reveal your hand. Plain and simple, right? And you can look at how many action points you have. And now you can see why it's good to get twos and threes, right? So you have those action points. Then you go ahead and you take your action. So let's go ahead and go through um, what these actions are. So you spend the action point to either move or attack. So with this hand, it looks like we have two action points that we can play with. With my two action points, I can decide to move him one or move him, well, sorry. He has a speed. Gildry has a speed. So I can go with Gildry. And I can go, okay, I'm going to use one action. I like to do this, the whole little spend card thing. I'm going to use one action, and his speed is four. So he can move up to four spaces. He can go, he starts here and go one, two, three, four. He can, you can go orthogonally, right, cardinal directions, or you can go diagonally. So he can go one, two, three, four, right? He can go one, two, three, four, anything like that. But you cannot move back towards your base. It, you're constantly being forced out. So you can't be like, oh, they're getting close. I'm going to jump back. Oh, they're here. I'm going to jump back. Right? Oh, no, that's not what it is. You can't go back into your base. Right? You can never go back into your base and hide. You can't actually move back and forth in here. All right. So you go ahead. If you use one to move, let's say he moves four. One, two, three, four. He's running around the cards. And then I have another action. Now I can move someone else or... I can attack, but his range on here is one. So he can't attack anybody. He's not close enough to anybody. So I can move someone else, and I can go ahead and take Randar over here if I want, and I can move him. And Randar's speed is two. So he gets to go one, two. We'll go like that. Now, and we would spend that point. Now, since we did movement, I just want to talk about really quick. The, the base guys, they move in directions. So if he is facing this way, if he moves, it takes, he gets, so Brog, his speed is one. Brog's really slow, but he hits really hard. So I could use one action and move him once. If I want to turn and go a different direction, I have to spend a whole action to turn him. So for me to go forward one, to go over to the spot, I would have to spend another action point and move him one to go there, All right? He can also move diagonal, but anytime you turn, so to turn from here to diagonal, action point, right? It's because he's big and slow, so they make him move slowly. For some people, it's an easy concept. It took me a little bit to get that under my head, or into my head, under my head. All right. So, and then let's go ahead and say someone is here. Let's say Firebug was cheeky and she had come across. So, we go ahead and we take Gildry and we get him next to... Um, Firefly, Firebug, I always want to call her Firefly, Firebug, and then he decides to attack. So let's go ahead and go through an attack. And this is, I'm trying to find places to put cards. All right. So this is how an attack works. Gildry, his attack 
He can only attack once on his turn, right? But we look at his strength. So he gets to roll three dice, right? So he takes his three dice. He rolls three dice. He got two skulls. Now, Firebug, if we look over here, Firebug's defense is three dice. So she gets to roll defense. And remember, these are unupgraded. They're just their base stats. So she gets to roll three dice. She gets three skulls. Now, what this means in combat, here, we'll put them like this. Her three skulls versus his two skulls. So skulls are either attack or defense, just depends on what you're doing. So Firebug rolled more skulls. So that means that she doesn't take any damage. No damage goes towards Gildry either, she just blocks all his damage. Now if Gildry had three skulls and Fire, well we could even do it this way, and Firebug rolled two skulls and a coin, what would happen is Firebug would take one hit so his attack's successful, and you look at the difference in the dice. So she would end up taking one hit, because these cancel each other out, right? So she would go ahead and take one hit. Now, the other thing is coins. This is how we get coins. One is being the only person in the gate, but the real way you get coins is by rolling um, ones. And then there's special abilities. Gildry has one, and I won't confuse you guys with those. You can read them on your own. But this means... Even though, she, even though she took a hit, Firebug also won her team a coin so she can upgrade later. So that is how attacking works in this, attacking and defending. And both the attacker and the defender get any coins rolled on their roll. All right, so that's the attack and technically the defend. All right, and then we go down to discard. It's getting real simple now, so we discard all of our cards. And then we go ahead and the seventh phase is draw a new hand of cards. I mean, arguably we don't have to say that's a phase. I think it's nice because you just keep it in your head. So one, two, three, four, five. And of course you can look at them as soon as you get them. That would be a great hand so far. And then it goes to the next player. The next player goes. That player goes through all of these seven phases. And once their turn's done, it goes to the next player. You go back and forth until someone gets seven or whatever you decide to pick. So did I grab seven? Let's see, I did, I grabbed six, right? That'd be hard. You probably don't wanna do even numbers. But once someone has won seven victory points, it's over, or of course you can decide on your own. And that is basically how you play the team mode. And if you guys want, let me know in the comments and I'll go into the arena mode. But that's how you play the team mode of Gatefall. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm Steven with Cardboard Coalition. I'll see you guys later. Bye.